Let's raise our hands tonight. Amen. Let's give God some praise as Brother Richard comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so excited to hear this word from God. Hallelujah. We pray that you would use him in a great and mighty way tonight. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me turn the mic on first. <laughs> it's important we give this service to the Lord. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Amen. Let's just continue that mindset and pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we give you this service tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, use my words as you see fit, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you fill my mouth, Lord Jesus. That the words that I bring forth bring life, Lord Jesus, and be the life that you have, Lord Jesus. Not my words, but your words, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for your perfect plan, your perfect will coming to manifest. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that our ears and ask that you work with us. Open our ears, Lord Jesus. Open our hearts that we receive the word in the way you intend lord jesus lord so that it brings forth your revelation the revelation lord jesus in your mighty and holy name jesus we thank you for these things and give you the praise honor and glory lord jesus hallelujah hallelujah jesus amen and amen amen thank you sister rosa well how y'all doing this evening you look like you're doing blessed amen that's good to hear well tonight we're going to be going over a little bit of getting that breakthrough, amen, but instead of focusing essentially on what breakthrough is, we're going to be focusing on how to get that, um, a way we can obtain that breakthrough, and that is to take the authority Christ has given us, amen, and to speak to the mountain, amen, see, because in our lives, sometimes many knows the devil works, like a little devil he is, <laughs> to stop our day, to come against us, amen, throw sickness, throw famine, throw uh, trial <laughs> and hard time at us, amen, but how many knows the words and voice of our God trumps over all, amen. amen, see, no matter what the devil does, no matter what he tries, he falls subject to the word of God, amen, and that's what we're going to go over today is learn how to quote and speak what is the word of God. Because sometimes in our prayer life, we get carried away with praising God for what he's doing without actually asking him to do it. See, we say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this breakthrough. I thank you for this one lost soul being saved, or I thank you for provision uh, coming to me. And it's great, don't get me wrong. You want to praise God because that's where your victory comes from is through the praise. We covered this, I think, in uh, my last sermon that the name Jehovah Nisi, where we come from the understanding victory, means the Lord is a banner. You have to lift him up to get victory. You lift, when you lift up the name of God, he fights your battles for you. Amen. Amen. However, before you get to the praise, does God, does the word of God not also say, ask and you shall receive. And see, we leave that part out sometimes. And it's not to knock down what we're doing, but rather to add to and bring it up in maturity. Amen? Amen. Because we need to do the whole package. There's a reason. God laid it out the way he did. It's important. He wants us to speak to those things. Right. Amen? And he's given us the power to do so. Because Jesus, in his name, lays all authority. Again, uh, covering back what was spoke over this morning, Jesus was here from the very beginning. He was here from the foundation of the earth. Now, I don't have the scripture reference offhand, but it says the word in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And not a single thing that was made was made without him. Amen. Meaning even from the book of Genesis, from the very beginning, Jesus, the word was there and was made. Why? Because Jesus is the spoken word of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? So when you quote Jesus, you're quoting the spoken word of God. We're going to get back into that a little bit. <laughs> but see, Jesus was there from the very beginning. So what did he do? He made and created manifest out of what was spoken word. Y'all hear me? <laughs> did God not create and say, let there be light? 
He did not speak and form man from the dust of the earth. Amen. Did he not place the stars in the heavens in place with the words of his mouth? See, Jesus has been doing this from the beginning. This is what he's known for is to create because he is the spoken word of God. Amen. So in his name, when we quote the name of Jesus, there's a reason Satan couldn't stand against that name. <laughs> there's a reason when he came down to earth, paid the price that he did, went to hell, took the keys of death on the grave from him, there's a reason he stood no chance. Because all power, all authority lies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we are blessed enough as sons and daughters of God where we can call on that name. But how many knows when you call on that name, it's to fulfill a purpose. It's to do something. In other words, God wants you to use that name to call his things into existence. Amen. Amen. Now, what are we calling into existence? We are calling the word of God. Because when we quote that name Jesus, what is Jesus? He is the spoken word of God. Amen. So while there is power of life and death in the tongue, we don't necessarily have the power to just say, okay, car manifest out of nowhere and it's going to happen. We're not God. <laughs> We're not just going to speak something and just appear out of nowhere. But what I'm getting across is when we take that authority that God has put in us, it's not God giving us the almighty uh, power to speak and manifest anything we want. He's saying this is what my will is. This is what I've spoke over your life. Now I've laid it in your hands to come in alignment with your faith, with what my will is, and bring it forth through spoken word. So when you speak things into existence, this is a revelation. You're not conjuring something out of nothing. You're calling in to manifest what God has already spoken. Are you hearing me? Now, what, who is Jesus. The spoken word of God. So quoting his name, taking the authority he has given us, is calling on the spoken word God has already spoken. Now I'll say this again. What did God do when he spoke and said, let there be light? He created light. So God's words create life. They create things. So if it's God's spoken word, is it not going to come to pass? It has to. Why? Because our Bible tells us God is not man that he should lie. At the very least, if what he has spoken is not in existence, best believe it's going to come into existence right now. Because he is not man. And what else does the Bible tell us? That his words do not return to him void. When it leaves his mouth, it now completes or sets to complete. So that's who God is. So when we call forth on the word of that God, our God, that word that he has spoken, take that faith and take that authority that you know this is not something that's not outside of the will of God. When he is, in other words, spoken for us that he wants healing, did Jesus not go to pay the price for healing? It says he took the stripes on his back. Exactly. For the manifestation of healing from all manner, all manner of sickness and disease. There is not one that's not covered. So if you have ailment that needs healed, what has God said? You were and are healed. That's not something you're creating. That's something you're reciting to God that he spoke. That's something you're rubbing in the devil's face, if I may add, that God, our God has already spoken. So you're not creating anything. You're standing on the word of God. Do we stand on the word of God like we should? Because, again, his word is all power. And nothing leaves his mouth and returns to him void. So when we speak his words, know what power you're speaking. Have the faith to expect 
the miraculous if it's not here yet. Because you're no longer working with ordinary words. You're calling forth what is the will of the perfect God, the all-powerful who, who has created everything, the great God I am. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So we have to remember that, amen? I know I'm going a lot of talk without scriptures, but I'm setting the tone here, <laughs> amen? Because we need to understand what our mission is, amen? We need to understand where the power comes from and why we can take such a strong stand on it, get our faith up to that level, amen? Because we know faith plays a part, but keep in mind, this is not something you're trying to will into existence. Exactly, Sister Linda. It's already done. <laughs> In other words, God already willed it. See, I have a lot of scripture references that, or scriptures I don't have reference for. That's okay. <laughs> the word is in you. It just keeps flowing out. Amen. This is why the Bible talks about being within the will of God and praying that you don't pray amiss. It's because if you're not praying according to the will of God, now you're trying to conjure. Now you're trying to convince God, this is what I want. This is what I see. And sometimes he's gracious enough to answer it because he said, if you ask, you shall receive. But how many knows God's ways are higher than our ways? So even though you see a way something can be done, best believe he already knows a better way. So rather than try to pray according to your own will, why not just quote what is his will? Or do we know what his will is? <laughs> well, I'll give you an easy route. At the very least, we know this. It is the will of God that all be in what? Good health and that all prosper as their soul prospers. Amen. So spiritual prosperity, spiritual maturity, and have all these other things taken care of. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The flowers don't worry about being dressed. Neither should you. <laughs> Amen. But this is the importance of quoting what is the word of God. Amen. Now, what does quoting the word of God do? Well, to get into that, Sister Rosalyn, we'll go ahead and uh, open up our first scripture here. If you can go to the book of Mark. We're going to go to chapter 11 and start at verse 22. Go to verse 24. So we're going to see direct command of what Jesus says here. Amen. And it says here, starting at verse 22, and Jesus said to them, have what? Faith in God. Faith in God. For what? Let's go to the next verse. If you... I, or I tell you the truth. If someone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen. It'll be what? Be done will be done. So that's not a might. <laughs> If you have faith, and if someone says, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. So you see, this is something that will happen. Amen. This is something we could put our faith in. This is not something questionable. Again, like I said, this is the power Christ has put in us. Amen. Amen. For this reason, I tell you, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Amen. Now, did it say, praise me for whatever and you'll have, have it? No. Is praising part of it? Yes. But what does it say? It says, whatever you pray and ask for. See, there's the missing concept of the verbal spurt spoken. God has given each and one of us, as his children, authority to speak to that mountain. 
I tell you, sometimes there, there's things God allows us to go through. Sometimes there's things he wants us to go through. But sometimes there's also battles that he has placed in you to overcome, placed in you so that he can display you to others, his power, as you get the victory over it. But you tassel with it longer than what you should have because you're not taking the authority he has given you. He did not say wrestle with it. He said speak. How often do we speak? <laughs> this isn't something I'm telling you to do. The previous verse, he just this is Jesus talking. It said, verse 22, Jesus said to them. And he continued on. Amen. Now. Let's see here. If you don't believe how that power works here, Rosalind, let's go ahead and go to back a couple verses, if you can, with the back button. Go to verse 20. We'll read 20 and 21. Because just before this, Jesus displayed exactly the effectiveness of this. Now, this isn't covering the actual event, but it very briefly states what happened. Where uh, Jesus saw a fig tree. And he wanted fruit from it. But in a natural sense, it wasn't the time or season for the fig to bear fruit. But as a lesson to them, he said, be ready in season and out of season. And because the fig tree bared no fruit, he cursed the fig tree. Amen. But then they, he, that, so that was something he spoke. And then he left and they continued on. He didn't make a scene about it. He just spoke it and continued on. But here in the morning, something happened. As they passed by, that same fig tree that Jesus spoke to, <laughs> they came back by that same fig tree, and they saw that the same fig tree that Jesus had cursed had withered from the roots. Next verse. So then Peter remembered what happened and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So this is where we got into the next verses, 22. Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Next verse. I tell you the truth. So he started off showing what he can do. He showed the effectiveness of speaking to a situation. And now he's saying the same thing you've seen me do. How many knows that other scripture? These same, thing, same things that you've seen me do, the same and greater will you do. Amen. So now Jesus showed us how it was done and now is telling us the same thing you've seen. If you speak to the mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. How many have mountains, situations that are like mountains in their lives? I'll go, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm, we're not skating through this life easy. <laughs> the Bible tells us it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Amen. We have problems. The good thing is God, Jesus, gives us a way out. But with that way out, he gives us what? The power to clear the path. He says, if you don't want to walk up this mountain, Cast it aside. See, sometimes we're afraid to do that because either we think we're supposed to go through it or sometimes we think we don't have the faith, we don't have the power. What if I speak to this and it doesn't happen and now people will see, oh, well, you spoke on behalf of your God. Uh, what's it look like now when it doesn't happen? Did God say to worry about that? No. No. What did he say? If someone says, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes with what the previous verse said, having faith in God, believes what he says will happen. So believing that God will come through, it will be done. This is not something questionable. This is something that's a commandment. This is a promise. This is a guarantee, an establishment. 
It's in contract, if you will. <laughs> you're not telling Satan, oh, we're going to try and conjure this up. We're going to do this. You're saying, no, this is what my God has wrote and signed for. Get gone. You're taking the authority Christ has put in you because the battle has already been won. The price has already been paid. We covered that. Jesus went, and before he went to the cross, he paid the price, didn't he, Sister Linda? For every sickness and disease, every manner of it, whether big or small, he paid for it all. He paid for all sin. He paid for all healing. And even when he went to the cross, what did he say? It is partially done. I did most of it, but you got to pick up the rest. Why do we walk around like we are? <laughs> no, he says it is finished. What Jesus has set to do, he has finished. Now, what we are left to do is call on what he did. My God says, I have victory through him. My word says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I don't have to worry about the situation. Amen. All I have to do is stand on my two feet on the word of God that he has brought forth, that he has promised me, and lift up the name of God that is true, that is not a lie, and declare the spoken word of God as it brings manifestation into my life. That's right. Amen. That's right. This is not something questionable. That's right. Amen. Yeah. This is you taking the faith Amen. that our Jesus has given us. Yes. You don't even have to make the faith. What, what does it say? To every man is dealt the measure of faith. Faith is a gift from God. You just have to activate it. Yes. Amen. Amen? How do you activate it? Exercise. Standing on the word of God. That's how you grow it. Yes, you got to exercise it. You don't just get anything strong from not doing anything with it. Right. As a matter of fact, if you don't do anything with it, what happens? I'll give you the uh, secular saying what you don't use you lose now i'll give you the biblical saying what happened to the talents the man who had the talent and buried it and did nothing with it lost it but those who multiplied gained more those in other words those who worked with it do we work with and honor the talents that god has given us because we should <laughs> God didn't give it to us for us to sit on it. God didn't give it to us for us to not have faith in it. God did not call you to create faith in yourself. He says, I've already taken care of that. I've already put in you what needs to be there. Did y'all hear me? <laughs> I'll use a typology Bishop uses a lot. If you're watching this, Bishop, I'm going to quote you here. <laughs> Watcher from Saginaw, Michigan. When you have a seed for what is an oak tree, does that seed have to conjure or make up what is going to later be part of that tree? You don't have to come and add anything to that seed. Everything that tree needs to be, the tree itself, the stump, the bark, the leaves, the, the fruit, and the next generation of seeds, Everything that that tree needs and will come to be is in within that one seed. What does it just need? Time to grow. Within us, from the moment God formed us in the womb, God has already placed inside each and every one of us every gift, every talent he wanted us to use. The only thing is, just as a seed needs to be buried and needs to die in order for life to come forth, you yourself have to lay yourself on the cross and deny what is our flesh as God brings forth what seeds he has already put in us. So faith is one of those. So don't worry or question if you have the faith. Amen. You know, I guess I'll be an open book here. Um, it's, it's a lot easier when you're praying to yourself, okay? 
But what's hard sometimes is when you pray for others because now your mind, in a carnal sense, has that mentality. Well, what if it doesn't happen? Well, now you're praying on behalf of someone else. Um, if they're looking up to you as a source of you know, leadership or so forth or as an example of what to be, if you pray out of line, if you don't, if you pray and it doesn't come forth, these are the things that could come in your head, right? But not too long ago, I use you as an example, Brother Lane. I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> he had um, some dental issues going on that were causing him pain. Amen. And we, uh, I don't forget if I called you or you called me, but we were talking on the phone. It was early one morning. I just got off of work. I worked third shift. He was just getting his day started. And as we're talking on the phone, he was telling me it was really bothering him. And I'll be honest, I had faith that everything in completion would be done right there. But at the same time, sometimes faith gets tried, <laughs> right? So I told him, I said, you know what? Well, we're just going to pray right now. Because, not because I felt a strong unction saying to pray, but because I knew a brother in Christ was going through something. And God says, pray. <laughs> Again, spoken word. What did I do? I stood on what he already said. So this is the will of God. So I took a step of faith in the unknown, not knowing what was going to happen. I said, well, let's pray, brother. <laughs> and as we prayed, what happened? It may not have been noticed right away, but I, God at least gave me the confirmation in myself as I was praying. I could feel him while we were praying. And I said, well, brother, I believe he's going to do it. I feel him right now that he's going to touch you. And it wasn't until the next Sunday he came to, he came and testified, saying from that moment on, even though he still had to go to the dentist to get work done, from that moment on, you said you didn't have any pain, did you? Exactly. <laughs> Amen. So God be the glory. He did what he said he would do. But it was a trial on my part, I'll be honest. Because <laughs> I've never, I've seen prayer services done before. I've seen cavities filled with gold, with silver. Uh, in the revivals we've had where with, with CS up the girl, I've had miraculous things done um, myself where I've literally felt, I haven't shared this with too many people, but I've literally felt like angels working on my body as they were healing me. <laughs> I was one of the most miraculous things that as a young man just triggered me like, okay, this is real. <laughs> it's one thing to see the after effect, but to feel the working on progress of God working on you is something completely different, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. But even with that, it's one thing to see it, but then to go and do it yourself sometimes, it's like, okay, I see you can speak to the mountain, but you want me to speak to the mountain? <laughs> and it's hard sometimes. But again, what the Pastor Linda just said not too long ago, we have to try our faith. Why? Because God has already spoken it. Again, this is not something that could happen or could not. That's why I said, what we're doing is not speaking things out of our own will, out of our own motives. That's not what, what's happening. If you do that a lot and nothing's happening, check if you're praying according to the will of God. But when you quote to God himself what he said, is he not going to do it? When you tell the devil what God has said, whose authority are you coming in? In yours or in the one who's already defeated him in his hometown <laughs> and came back from it afterwards. Amen. Amen. Death and hell could not hold him bound. Amen. But this is the power and the authority we have. Amen. So take faith in that and know that your God has given you the ability to speak to the mountain and have it cast to the sea. You have the ability to speak to the mountain as if you were Christ. And do you hear that? You have the ability to speak as if you were Christ. Exactly. Because we are what? Christians. We are in the name, in the authority, in the image of Christ. In obedience to Christ. Followers of Christ. The same things you've seen me do, the same and greater will you do. In my name. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't believe me with that, let's go ahead and go to the next verse, Rosalind. 
Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 4 and look at verse 13. This may bring it home a little more. Amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. But since we have the same spirit, since we have the same spirit, the same spirit that has rose Jesus from the grave, the same Jesus <laughs> that is the resurrection, the truth, and the life, who has spoke to the seas and calmed the storm, amen, who has spoke to the dead and brought them back to life, who has spoke to the fig tree and cursed it at the root, amen. The same Jesus that spoke things, speaks these things into creation, formed the world itself, since we have the same spirit of faith. So do we have a different spirit than what Jesus did? So why should our power be any different? Why should the authority be any different? What it comes down to is the level of faith you have, which is, again, is important why you work and try your faith. Amen. The stronger you get your faith, the more you work with it, the more you can do. Amen. Just like a muscle. You go to the gym, you start off with the little weights, eventually you can get to the bigger ones. At one point, you may be able to speak to a cold. Later on, eventually, you can speak to cancer. Get out. Start somewhere. If you have something going on in your life, test it. If it's a little bit of sinus, stand on the word of God and say, Lord, you have spoken in your word. And I'm not saying we're not ever going to go through cold or sickness. It's not the end of the world if you're going through that. <laughs> I mean, knows we all go through this. Even Bishop, who uh, even on a medical sense has all the knowledge and everything, admitted he left himself in a weakened state by not getting enough sleep, which weakened his uh, immune system. And even he came down with a cold. <laughs> but. What I'm saying is find the areas in your life where you can take your baby steps, where you can test things. Now, don't take the easy way out, but try your faith. Work out your own salvation. If you see something, speak it. Amen. If you're not comfortable enough praying over somebody else, start with yourself. Say, sickness, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Believe in it and stand on it. And when it happens, <laughs> know that it happened because what you've done is you've taken the authority Christ has put in you. And you were obedient. You've spoken to and brought forth what is his will, what he has already spoken. Amen. So we need to take our faith and work with it. Amen. But here it says, but since we have the same spirit of faith as that shown in what has been written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believed. Do we believe? Therefore speak. Amen. We need to take that authority, amen. And this is the key to getting the house of God back in order. And I'm not just talking about this body right here. I'm not just talking about the Christian community. I'm talking about this nation this world, getting things back into order. It takes, it starts when you take the authority that Christ has put in you and you say, devil, you're not going to stand in this city. You're not going to have your way in my family. You're not going to succeed in this government body. I am going to proclaim what is the word that is already spoken, that my warfare is not carnal, but is spiritual, mighty through God to the point of tearing down strongholds and principalities in high places. Anything that exalts itself against the truth of my God, I cast down. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. This is the authority you Christ has given you in your life. Amen. Not to sit on your little footstool and make a life that you're so happy about, 
But again, it's to bring forth what is the will of God. God wants all to be saved. God wants a nation that's willing to serve him. Amen. God does not want people to be lost in sin or to sell themselves to sin. Because that's what's happening right now. <laughs> but what God wants is all to be delivered. Amen. What, but what he needs is a people, is a nation, is a body that's willing to stand up and proclaim what is the spoken word. Yes. Amen. Some people may say, oh, well, why doesn't God just do this himself? Why do we have to speak? Am I not the hands and feet of God? God does not do anything without us. Now, I'll correct that because there are some things he works without us knowing, without us understanding. But there's a reason he said he needs a willing vessel for a reason. The thing is, though, if he can't find the vessel in us, he'll make the donkey or the rock be the vessel. Let's not have it come to that point. <laughs> Amen. He said, if the, my people won't praise me, the rocks will cry out. <laughs> a man who heard from God, uh, who was told not to do this or to do that, to do that he d defied God anyways, was deceived, and the donkey had to preach to him. <laughs> God will use who and what he will. Again, he's not limited by our means of understanding. What he's limited by is our willingness. He has the desire to save the nation. What he lacks are the people who are in one mind and one accord with his spirit and are willing to take the faith and stand up and declare what is his word. It's not God. <laughs> if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves would turn from their wicked ways, repent, and seek my face and pray, then I will hear their prayers. See, you're not even reaching God's ears if you're not in with his word. Did you know that? You have to be within his will in order for the spoken word to get through. We do not speak the words ourselves. We do not create in our own authority. What we're doing is we're standing on the word of God and testifying, declaring, lifting up what he has already spoken. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. God has given us this commandment. And when we do this, we become the willing vessels, the embodiment of who he is. And it's then he can have a nation stand up. It's then he can move and have his way in our nation. It's then when we get ourselves out the way and allow God to have his way, it's then he could come into our families as we want him to. But again, it comes to when we crucify ourselves. That is to lay down your will, your way, despite how much you may want something, despite how much uh, affection you may have for something. Don't go through your way. Go God's way. Seek what his way is. If it's in contradiction to what you want, crucify your way. Lay it down because his way is better. I'll tell you that. I don't have to go into great detail, but if you need any testimony, I can testify to you today. Time and time after time again, when I hear what the will of God is, when I know what the will of God is, and I decide to do it a different way, it always smacks me in the face. <laughs> And I always have to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know better, but my, help my heart. <laughs> and he does. But sometimes I still get up and I still <sighs> have the little, I guess, thorn in my flesh, you may say, your stubbornness. I don't know. <laughs> See, sometimes we think we know what's best. It is. And that's the ongoing, recurring battle we have to fight is with this flesh body. That's why it says daily crucify that flesh. Daily, put on the mind of Christ. At the start of your day, align yourself, realign yourself with what is the mindset of God and what is the will of God. Do everything you can to stay hidden in him. And when you're hidden in him, if God be for us, who can be against us? That is the spoken word. Amen. Hallelujah.
So when we have the same spirit, just as Jesus did, he gives us the commandment here very clear. Because the same spirit Jesus had is now inside of us. That's talking about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the born again process, being reborn in Christ. Gone are the old ways. Behold, all things become new. Now that we have the same spirit, now that we have the same faith, now we have the same authority, go forth and speak. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Now, Rosalind, let's go to uh, the next verse here. We'll go to the book of Romans. We'll go to chapter 4, and we'll uh, start at verse 16, Romans 4, 16. All right, be prepared to have 17 after this. So it says here, for this reason, it is by faith so that it may be by grace, with the result that the promise may be certain to all the descendants, not only to those who are under law, but also to those who have faith of Abraham, who was the father of all. So essentially what this is talking about is manifestation of spoken word so that it comes forth with the results, with the evidence, so that it's not just for the uh, person of the time to see, but when God has given you prophecy, when God has spoken something in your life, he intends to bring results so that it's certain to all descendants. In other words, when we speak things, when we bring forth what is the will of God, and speak it into manifestation. God's not going to leave you hanging because when we have that same spirit and speak, he brings forth the results so that all are certain. I didn't catch that, did you? <laughs> See, God works so that all can be for his glory. So if he works all to be for his glory... If he gives us the commandment, speak to the mountain and it will be moved. If he has the expectation and we deliver, is it not in his hands now? The ball's out of our court. I've done what I could do, Orlando. <laughs> I prayed. I just had hope. And God delivered. I came to church that next Sunday and you gave the testimony. And he, he testified on God at, behalf anyways and he knew it wasn't me I could not do anything like that I'm not super powered amen but when you stand on the word of God stand on the word of God because see I'm gonna I'm lay this one on you sometimes we get in this predicament we know what the word of God is we know what it says this is the word of God and what we find Oh, I don't want to break another tablet. <laughs> I'll take this out the case for now. I'm going I'm to use props here, okay? If I can get it out. Get this up here. This tablet is sized very well. <laughs> okay. Cost me some money when my last one broke. The screen protector stayed intact, but the tablet broke. I'm not having that happen again. <laughs> but say this is the word of God. God says to stand on his word. What he expects is for his word to be our foundation and for us to stand on it. Yet instead of doing this, what we find ourselves doing is <laughs> that's not standing. To stand, it means you put your whole weight on it. You have complete trust. Have faith in God. Know who your God is. Amen. See, it comes through faith. That's why it says have faith in God in the verse 22 of the previous verse we read. That's why it says... 
to stand. Amen. That's why it says it comes through God and why it says we have the same spirit of faith. Amen. But we have to take a stand. Now, again, I know sometimes we have to exercise that faith. We have to work on it. A baby may start at that step. Because a baby is just learning the walking process. They have to learn the footsteps. But for a grown man to not have the ability to stand on his own two feet is concerning. Now you're looking for special aid. Okay, well, is something wrong? Is there anything I can do for you? This is a special case. What's, ex cause what's expected, what is normal, is that I walk just fine that I stand on my own two feet. So much so, if I may provoke this even more, you mind being on camera, brother? For a second, you mind being on camera for a second? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use examples real good on y'all here. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna have him try me, okay? Now I'm gonna stand here. Now what, what you wanna do, what I want you to do is give me a little push, give me a little shove. Go ahead, yeah, shove me, go ahead. Come on. You <laughs> okay, see? He knocked me off my balance. Do it again. Harder. Do it again. Harder. Come on. He's going easy on me. He's he trying to stay best friends. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you want a real push? Go ahead. Try it. Okay, see, even that time, he got me to move. Now, let me ask you this question. Did I stumble or fall? Did I get misplaced? Maybe. Did he knock me off balance the first time? Maybe. He caused me to bend. But did I fall down? Is our faith strong enough that when we face trials and temptation, when we face obstacles, when we face situations where there seems to be no way, we cannot be knocked off of what God said? That's the faith God calls us to. It's not the little testing of the water. It's walking on the water with Jesus. Get your faith to the place where God called it to be. You can go ahead and sit down, brother. <laughs> amen. God did not call you to stay in the shallow end. Amen. God did not call you to stay in the infant level. Amen. God has a specific purpose for you. Amen. And it is our responsibility to work out that salvation, work out our own salvation with trembling and fear before the Lord, amen, to exercise our most holy faith and to get ourselves to where we trust in who our God is, we can stand on who our God is, we know what his word says, we cannot be shaken, we cannot be moved, and we move forth with which what is the faith and which what is the authority our God has given us. This is what God wants. But if we're too busy testing it out and lack the stability, we're never going to bring the breakthrough that this nation needs. You won't even get it to your family. How in the world can you bring stability through God to someone else if it's not first yet in you? All right? Lead by example. Wonder why we have so many wishy washy Christians in the church. <laughs> Someone has to take a stand, amen? And until we do that, until we take the authority our Christ has given us, amen, and take a stand, we're not going to see the things move. God has the armies ready, the angels are already around, they're just waiting for you to speak it. Because God has given them that commandment. We are entertaining angels, a host of angels unaware. His warring angels are constantly surrounding us. His angels protect us. But he also surrounds us with angels willing to do what we say, but we never say it. Ministering angels, minister to my loved one. Remove deception from their life. Reveal truth unto them. Hallelujah. Warring angels. Set a barrier around me so that no opposing um, spirits may have their way. Set the tone. This is something you can do when you confront 
as obviously we don't deal with that here being in the house of God. But you go outwards, you're supposed to carry God's presence with you and carry his atmosphere. You are now an ambassador, which means you're going into what is the world. Set the atmosphere. Amen. 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 I seen it said on a video recently where someone was talking about debates and they said, if you want to have a good stand on what a debate is, don't let them bring you to their courtroom. You bring them to yours. Don't be the opposing visitor. When you walk, you carry what is the presence of the living God with you. Set the tone, set the stage. Warring angels, I speak a hedge around this right now. I call forth the will of God, the manifestation of your peace to prevail here so that what you set to accomplish will be accomplished in Jesus' mighty name. Start speaking those things that he wants. Amen. It starts with that. Amen. I guess we can go ahead and go on to the next verse here before I get too carried away. <laughs> go ahead, Rosalind. So it sees uh, it brings forth the result for all to see. Amen. Now let's go to verse 17. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. So if you go back a verse, that's talking about Abraham here. Go back to 16, Rosalind. So. Right here, as you see, it says, not only to those who are under the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. So let's start off. For this reason, it is by faith so that it may be by grace, with the result that the promise, what God has spoken, may be certain to all the descendants. From this point on, for all generations to come, let the word of God be evident. The promise of God be certain. Not only to those who are under the law, which is the Old Testament, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham, who is the father to us all. Next verse. So talking about the new covenant here. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. This is the promise God has given, the prophecy. This is the word God has spoken to Abraham. God's word did not die out because the covenant changed. God's word did not die out because hundreds of years have passed by, maybe thousands. I'm not too certain on time frame of Old Testament starting to finish. But I do know this. There are a lot of people that lived for a few hundreds of years. <laughs> Amen. And I also know Jesus came to this earth, and after he died, which is why we have A.D., Amen. We still acknowledge that as a world. B.C., they say before common era, you still acknowledge the point in time. When Jesus Christ, our Savior, came to this world before Christ and after death, we know, still know, after Jesus has finished what he finished, we still had 2,023 years. 2,023 years. And our God's word did not die out. It did not lose promise because it did not lose power. God's words do not return to him void. If God has spoken and you have not seen the manifestation yet, do not doubt. Know who your God is and stand. I have, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the presence of God whom he believed. Amen. So not a physical father, but in the presence of God through faith. That's talking about us here. Father of faith. The God who makes the dead alive, amen, and summons the things that do not yet exist as though they already do. Now, we hear that preached a lot. Speak those things that are not as though they are. Amen. But here you see it as what? God makes the dead alive, and he summons things that do not exist as if they already did. That's a little bit deeper for one, so I'm going to try to explain it. When God creates something, this is his attitude. This is his mindset, his level. Because he already willed it, even before he spoke it, it exists. So why is it any different for you? So in other words, this is where that teaching comes from. 
when God says, I want this to be done, excuse me, get stuffy. <laughs> when God says, I want this to be done, and you don't see it yet, do not retreat, do not step back off of what God has said. Know who your God is, know what he has promised, because every word that leaves his mouth is a promise. Amen. Amen. Know what your God has spoken and acknowledge it as if it already exists. What, is it not going to come to pass? Well, it may be if you doubt your God, because doubt can kill it, or at the very least delay it. It says, if you believe, speak. But God, we just established, is not in lack of power. It's not on him. So when he speaks and you call on what is that word of God and you take a declaration on what your God has already said, know that you're not manifesting something that you're going to see that's now going to be created as something new. That's the amazing aspect that the carnal brain sees. The mindset of the spiritually mature person says, well, it already exists. I, my eyes just didn't see it yet. This is the faith you need to have. Faith that sees according to the spirit, not the natural. We live by faith, not by sight. Or rather, we walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> Same thing. Live, walk. This is a faith walk. Amen. Amen. We don't judge. We don't base upon what we see in the natural. Amen. What we base it off of is what God has already spoken. So if he has spoken it, and if you've not seen the manifestation of it yet, keep declaring what is his word. Do not stop just or get doubtful just because you don't see it yet. Do not abandon what is the hope in our God's promise. No, no, no. Because it's not a maybe. It's a guarantee. Do you have faith in who your God is and what he says? Then take a stand. Amen. Amen. We'll go ahead and close it there. Amen. Amen. So I thank you all for who has made it out. Amen. Amen. I hope you got something out of this, but take that. Amen. Amen. This is the faith God wants us to have. Amen. Amen. We need to be in a place where when God wants something done, we need to have the maturity to know what it is that he wants done and the faith to speak. Do not wait. Do not praise only. Speak. Call it forth. Use the authority God has put in each and every one of you. Amen. I thank you all for making it out tonight. This is where we'll end it for the service. Amen. So we thank you for tuning in on the stream. However, we'll end it here. So we love you. Take care. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next one. Amen. Hallelujah.